Does your camera's sensor size affect depth of field? It does, but probably not in the way that you think. Big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. A couple of weeks ago, I released a video that debunks lens compression. As you can see in this test, if you take an image from the exact same distance from your subject with a telephoto lens and a wide angle lens, the compression of the scene will be the exact same. But you may have noticed that there is one significant difference between these two shots. The image taken with the wide angle lens has a significantly deeper depth of field. Why is this happening? Let's first look at how a lens works. Light rays are reflecting off objects all around us, and a lens can focus those light rays onto a digital flat sensor in your camera. Focusing a lens will allow a single point source of light at a precise distance to be focused as a single point on the sensor. Everything else in your scene that is closer or further away from your focus distance will create blur circles on the sensor rather than sharp points because those light rays are converging before or after the camera sensor rather than directly on it. These blurry circles are called the circle of confusion. The further away these light rays converge from the sensor, the larger blurry areas of light or bokeh will be produced. If these circles of confusion are small enough to be perceived by a human as a single point, they are within the depth of field or area of acceptable focus. So technically speaking, depth of field is determined by what the human eye can see. And so if that's the case, things like resolution, image size, and distance to the image you're actually viewing can change depth of field. You can imagine if something is really big and you're very up close, you're looking at every little detail, the depth of field would actually be shallower in that case. Now, I don't wanna to go too deep down this rabbit hole, but scientifically speaking, in many cases, smaller sensors actually produce a shallower depth of field because they have a higher pixel density. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna keep things relatively simple. We're going to assume that we're working with a similar resolution, a similar print size, and a similar field of view in each of the shots that we're going to be comparing. To make this easy to understand, we've created this very simple diagram. As you can see, when the light converges and touches the sensor, that is the focus point, and that should create the smallest dot of light possible. Now, the depth of field does not mean that everything is perfectly in focus. It just means that it is acceptably in focus. And you can see that within this range here. As you can see, as the light converges more quickly, the depth of field becomes narrower. And as the light converges more slowly, the depth of field becomes deeper. Now, there are only three ways that we can change the depth of field of an image. One is by moving the camera forward or backward and changing the focus distance. Two is by changing the length of the lens. That would be the millimeter length of the lens that you're using. And three, of course, is the most obvious, and that is changing the aperture of the lens. Let's look at all three. By moving your camera back away and lengthening your focus distance, you will increase your depth of field. You can see this happening in our diagram because as we extend the focus distance, the light rays converge more slowly. You can see here, if I take a picture of David up close, the depth of field is much shallower rather than if I back away. So even though we have two different fields of view here, you can see if we zoom in with the wider shot to create the same field of view or crop in afterwards, you will notice that the shot where we're closer to the subject has a much shallower depth of field. Changing your lens's focal length will also have an effect. In this example, I'm going to take the first shot at 70 millimeters at f2.8, and then I'm not going to move back at all, but I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to shoot at 200 millimeters at f2.8 as well. Once again, you'll notice that with the longer lens in this case, we will be creating shallower depth of field. The final way that we can change our depth of field is by changing the lens's aperture. And by stopping down your lens, what you're doing is physically blocking the light rays that would cause the blurriest circles on your sensor. When you do this, you are creating a darker scene overall, but if you compensate, you will be able to get a very similar looking shot with a shallower or deeper depth of field. Here you can see I've taken the exact same shot with the exact same lens at f2.8 and f22, and you'll notice that there is a huge difference in the depth of field. So let's take what we've learned and let's do a little experiment here. Let's try to take a shot with extremely deep depth of field. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back way up. I'm going to put David in front of this gazebo and I'm going to back up as far as I can. 
I then am going to grab the widest lens that I have that happens to be a 15 millimeter lens that will also produce really deep depth of field. Then to exaggerate this even further, I'm going to shoot at the highest f-stop possible, which in this case is f22. As you can see in this image, every part of it is in focus. We could look at the farthest point away, which might be a tree, or we could look at the grass right in front of the camera. Everything looks sharp. So now let's do the opposite. What I'm going to do is get as close to David as I can. I'm going to find the absolute minimum focusing distance here. I'm going to be using a long lens. In this case, I'm going to be trying to shoot at 200 millimeters, and I'm going to be shooting with the widest aperture I can. As you can see in this shot, we have David's front eye in focus, but his back eye is already going out of focus. So as you can see, we created the first shot, which has hundreds of yards worth of depth of field. And then the second shot has just a few millimeters worth of depth of field. So now let's go back to the very first question. Does a larger sensor produce shallower depth of field? Let's do one more test here. For this shot, I'm going to be taking an image of David at 100 millimeters at f2.8. You can see here I'm shooting on my full frame Nikon D850. Now I'm going to take off the camera, I'm going to leave the lens in the exact same place, and I'm going to take the exact same shot with my GH5, which is a micro four thirds sensor. As you can see, we have very different fields of view with both of these cameras, but you will notice that if we zoom in with the Nikon D850 shot to create the same field of view, the depth of field will look the exact same. Now, let's say we wanted to create the exact same field of view with both cameras. There's only two options that we have. One, we could change the lens. We could use a 50 millimeter lens on the micro four thirds camera instead, or we could back the camera up to get the entire scene as well. Let's do both of these things. So what I've done here is I've left the camera in the exact same place, but instead of shooting with the 100 millimeter lens, I'm switching over to a 50 millimeter lens, which will produce the exact same field of view on this different size sensor. Now, as you can see, we've created two images that have the exact same field of view, but if we zoom in on both of these shots to take a closer look, you will find that the D850 does have a shallower depth of field. That's not because the sensor's bigger though, it's because we used a longer lens. Now let's try one final experiment. What happens if we use the same 100 millimeter lens, but we back up? As you can see, we are changing our perspective a bit, but we are getting the entire scene in the shot. It looks somewhat similar, but as we learned earlier, moving the camera back does make the light rays converge more slowly, and so it also produces a deeper depth of field. Once again, if you compare these two shots, the depth of field out of the D850 does appear shallower. So in conclusion, it's not really the larger sensor that creates a shallower depth of field, but larger sensors do have a tendency to encourage photographers to either move forward to get the composition they want or to use a longer millimeter lens, and both of those things will create a shallower depth of field. Once again, big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you're a photographer, you definitely need a website, and before you go out and spend thousands of dollars to hire an individual to make something custom for you, you definitely wanna check out Squarespace because you actually might be able to do it yourself and it only costs a few bucks a month. If you wanna save some money, head over to squarespace.com slash f-stoppers and you can save 10% on your very first order. For more content just like this, head over to fstoppers.com and if you'd like to check out our full length photography tutorials, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. <laughs>